Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Yeah, my voice is still shot, so y'all have to bear with me. I can't scream over all these roosters hollering. Had a request to do a video on game file. I don't do a lot of game file videos simply because when you start doing videos on game file, it leads people to believe that you fight chickens. I don't have any problem with people fighting chickens if they want to fight chickens. I'm of the persuasion that people need to make their own mind up and do what they want to do. I just don't do it. And I don't want to lead people to think that I do. I just, I love the look of these birds. Uh, you can't tell me that those big, long, tall feathers, the way this bird stands is not one of the most beautiful chickens on the, that there is. Uh, you notice that I don't cut cones. Uh, most, <laughs> he's getting irritated. He don't like to be messed with. And I don't mess with him a whole lot. Uh, all right, now, <laughs> they feisty. These birds, it's in their natural instincts to be vicious. Uh, you see, he's got his feathers swelled out. What I'm going to do today is we're going to worm some of these chickens, and I'm going to show you one of the ways that I do that. <laughs> He'll get blood in a minute, I promise you. But anyway, that's all right. Let me get his wings pinned in a little better. I fixed to move him from a pen that he was in. He may not let me. It's hard to do some of this by yourself. Uh, and he, I'm noticing that he's got a few mites on him as well. So what I'm going to doctor him with is an ivermectin. And this is not the ivermectin that kills coronavirus. <laughs> uh, this is a topical one. So I'm going to try to do this and not let him get away from me. This is a blue liquid, it's Ivermax. So what I do is I suck this up in a syringe that don't have a needle in it, and I drop a little bit right on the back of the neck. A couple of drops is all. It's a good topical wormer. It's a lot easier to fool with than trying to give shots and open their mouth up. And this has seemed to be a really good wormer for me. It has worked better than anything I have used. You don't need this much in a syringe, a couple of drops, but I'm gonna take this syringe and we're gonna do a couple of birds. So what I do is I just ease this up in there and I get where I can see with him moving around. And I squirt a little bit in his back of his neck right there. This is a Macray. He's a beautiful bird. I've had him for a while. I've got one of his sons that's mixed with a gray right here. We'll pull him out, worm him. Uh, I've got another Macray that's his son that's right here that looks totally different. Uh, well, not totally. This gray is dark, but this one is dark like him, but they have a little bit better coloring. We'll pull a couple of these out. Ow, he got me in the side. And let you look at them, but... Uh, yeah, I do have, still have my game file, or some of them. Now, I will say this, I am slowly working my way down. I kind of decided which ones I like fooling with. I've got so many chicken feeds going up so high right now. Me just doing this as a hobby, I'm kind of backing out of how heavy I was in it. So, I'm down from, I was around probably 200 and something birds all together. I'm, I'm going to guess right here, there's probably... 60 to 75 birds here at this point in time. All right, now this bird here, he is McRae as well, but this is a young bird. And they're going through molt right now. But you notice, I want you to see how his comb has got some dark to it. That's a variation in this bloodline that I have. But now one of the ways that I One 
the ways that I go about checking my birds other than just wait. Now this is naturally a smaller bird. He's gonna weigh less than the other one. But I feel this breast bone right here. And if I can feel that it's protruding a good bit, I know he needs worming and these do. And now they're not bad, but they haven't been wormed. And I worm probably every six months. I don't overworm. A lot of people want to do this once a month deal. I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been fooling with these game birds for not long as a lot of people, but probably five years. I have learned a lot. The first three years, I thought I had to run a hospital. Uh, I put sand in the bottom of them. I kept stalling the pins, fresh grass clipping, moving pins around to keep them on green grass. All the stuff. I did not have healthier birds. I have healthier birds now that I quit fooling with them, shut the medicine cabinet. If one gets sick, he just dies. Now, I do believe in worming, but as far as me giving Tylon and all these other medical treatments to try to save every bird from every little neck shows up. If that bird starts acting like he's drunk, staggering around, you need to get rid of him. Don't run a hospital. Now, it's very seldom that I lose a bird to sickness. Now, I have lost a few to predators, but I quit doctoring on them and I have healthier birds. That's just, and I don't clean pens. I throw a little fresh grass in there every once in a while for them to scratch in and peck in. I throw some leaves in some of them. But I don't try to keep a spotless pen, and I do not keep spotless water bowls because they need to build up an immune system. They're like anything else. If you keep everything spick and span and spotless, they don't have an immune system. Well, that's just my opinion. But this is a beautiful bird. He's a young bird. He's probably, probably right about a year old right now. So we're going to put him up. We're going to grab us another one. I will say this bit, Nick. It's got several large holes in it, but this is the best way I have found for me to catch birds and not be. Some of these in these pens I can walk in and kind of grab, but in these little round pens that you see that I have like this one, it, that little hole, I can't get up in there and chase that bird flying all around, so it's safer for both of us for me to pin him to the ground with his dip net and get him. So that's the way I do it. It's gonna be very rare if we film this whole video and I don't get blood somewhere. Ah, uh, too late. I knew it happened. But that is the nature of fooling with game fowl. Game fowl are not for people that like to just, oh, how sweet, pet my chicken. The spirit of this bird is what I like. Uh, now, I know I do not fight chickens, again. Uh, I don't have a problem with you if you do, that's your business. I'm not one of these people that think that what I like is what everybody else should like. Uh, I just, I like my birds and I'm really too greedy to lose them and that's why I don't want to fight them. Uh, but now, I like the fact that he's feisty. I like the fact that he's a yard pimp. He's a boy dog. This is a uh, new train gray. And like I said, he's probably about a year and a half to two years. The reason I have a lot of young birds is I got rid of some of my older stuff because I was down to the blood that I wanted to run. And I'm, I'd like to say it, if I was fighting my birds, you would see all their cones cut. <laughs> Seeing these cones in full, you know I'm not fighting birds. Uh, game file people know this. But now I look under, when I get a bird out and go to fooling with them, I raise these feathers up right here. And there's mites. Now I doubt he's going to let me get close enough for you to tell. They're not bad. But in these feathers close to the neck, you will see some little bitty bugs crawling around in there. This will help with that. This, this medicine, I have a spray over here that I spray, but if I put this on, I don't do anything else because this is pretty strong medicine. And a lot of times ivermectin will take care of more than just one symptom or one problem. But now y'all notice anytime I get out here filming anything, these birds go to competing. Now they've done stirred them up and they're extremely happy today. I can't see. You don't want to put too much on there. Rusty.
Jericho wants to help. Now this bird here, me feeling a him, his, you can see that bone protruding. This bird's in bad need of worming. So sometimes you need to keep a little better check on them than probably what I'm keeping on them right now. This is a Clemens uh, Gray. Fortunately, I don't see any mites on him. Just a small shot of that, right under the skin. But I like to look at these tall feathers. Animals, it gets to be exciting, especially trying to film it all. Now this one is a Macrae as well, but you see his color is a lot different. Just a light shot, that's all he needs. little bird here another young bird and the reason i'm pulling these younger ones out right now is uh like i said i got rid of some of the older ones and this is some stuff that i kept and i'm now moving them into these pens back here where I, i've got two kelso hens that the male that was in there my brood stock that was in there got killed this bird that i pulled out recently a while ago tore through the wire and they got in a fight in that pen and it killed them. Now these pens have dividers down so far up to the, where that wood stops. So there's a piece of pen laying down to prevent that. But anyway, it happened. But anyway, this little guy here, he's gonna be my stock now and he's less than a year old. So we're gonna give him, now I don't see any mites on him at all. But now he was in, no. But now he was in one of these other pens outside. A lot of times that has a lot to do. Now this is a young guy. He did have longer feathers than that, but like I said, some of them out there are molting. They don't all molt at exactly the same time for whatever reason. But this is one of the few yellow leg birds that I keep. I see my little boy pulling up. He's gonna wanna come help me. We're going to put him in here with these two hens. Now this is going to be one of the last ones that I do today. Um, I, I, for whatever reason, I try not to medicate a whole bunch of birds at one time. I guess for the habit of I used to stuff used to, it'd go wrong when I would doctor some. You'd, next thing you know, some would die. So you don't want to kill everything at one time. Now, me and this bird here has got a long history. Not really me and him, but him. He's been attacked by either a fox or a possum or a raccoon on two different occasions inside a heavy gauge steel cage. Had his crawl ripped open one day, and I mean his, the seed that he would eat was pouring out of it onto the ground. He survived that. About a year later now, he's probably about two years old, about a year after that, he was attacked again in there. Same situation, except his wing was nearly about ripped off. It, bone was protruding out of it. He completely recovered from all of that. He's, he's a good health. And now you notice on this side, he don't have the wings. And I don't know where he's bleeding from. Somewhere up there where that bone is protruding out. So when he gets excited, it poked through his skin. He's He's got a life-lasting life injury from it. Otherwise, very healthy bird. And a pretty bird. Out of 
we start to get a little sour, we're going to put him up. I know and he's bleeding. I may have to check him out a little bit. Uh, thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.